Talking with the Experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts, where we believe that success is a journey, and every journey is easier with help from friends. That's why we bring you top-notch experts and real business heroes eager to share their lessons from the road to success. We delve into new topics each week, effective marketing strategies, innovative problem solving, financial planning, and team building. We tackle everything you need to know to grow your business and keep it thriving. Whether you dream about launching your first startup or a business veteran looking to shake things up, we've got you covered. With each episode, you'll gain knowledge, boost your confidence, and be inspired to take action. So, grab a coffee, make yourself comfortable, and join our exciting journey. You're not alone in this. We're here, guiding you, cheering for you, and celebrating each milestone. Let's turn your business dreams into reality, starting today. Here is your host, Rose Davidson. Talking with the experts. In episode 498, Natasha Sakota shares with us how you can go from being a solopreneur to a CEO. That, um, and then another thing on that topic is also the idea that a great way for teams to also help themselves is that each week they can also say, well, what did I do yesterday or the week before? So where am I? What do I have to do tomorrow or today? But what is blocking me? Because people are scared to say that they can't do something or that they aren't, you understand? So giving yeah. them a chance together to say, look, I'm having a problem. And when if the boss is not there, once the team is established though, you know, it, it helps because the team resolves their old problem. You're, you're from, tell me which, is Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Australia, yes. Yeah, but the New Zealand All Blacks, they are one of the, they have a culture that is incredible. There, there's that book, which is brilliant, you know, uh, about the, the rugby team. And they, mm. um, yeah, and they really, uh, actually the team coaches themselves. The coach is not always there. They manage to coach themselves. They are so united. Talking with the experts. Is starting a podcast on your bucket list? Unlock successful podcasting for your business with this 81 page ebook. From passive listener to raving loyalist, the ultimate playbook to mastering podcasting for service based businesses. Get your copy today. Purchase for $27 for a limited time. Or find it at rose davidson.com in the store. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today my guest is Natasha Sakota, and Natasha is going to be discussing how we can go from solopreneur ooh, to CEO. Now, executive <laughs> coaches like Natasha help solopreneurs develop a strategic mindset. And by working closely with their clients, they assist in setting clear goals, identifying opportunities and creating long-term visions for their business. Through coaching sessions, um, Natasha helps solopreneurs prioritize their tasks, make effective decisions and develop the necessary leadership skills to navigate their transition to becoming CEOs. I want to listen to this really well. <laughs> Natasha, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Rose. Wonderful to be here with you. <laughs> yeah, so tell Thanks. me how, how you started your journey as an executive coach and, you know, what led you to this path? Yeah, well, um, actually, um, I started my own business with my husband. We opened a hotel. And there was this whole new in the south of France, so just so that you understand the touristic uh, situation. And this whole world opened up before I was in banking in the corporate world, you know. So there, you know, you're, you're an employee and you have to. And there I had to start everything from the beginning. So it was, wow, how do we set up the team? How do we go forward and make sure it functions correctly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this was a lot of learning by doing. And then I finally thought, well, you know what? I think I need to really go more in depth 
find out what it's all about because it, it was successful, but it took a lot of years and a lot of pain and a lot of difficulties. So um, going into executive coaching allowed me, first of all, to help me and uh, my husband, and then also to provide and give back to those who would wish to start their own business and go forward. Yeah, and I love that you're giving back because that's really important that as business leaders, we um, help those on the way up um, to rise rather than trying to keep them pushing them down because I think there's too many leaders or so-called leaders in in business who um, don't let the cream rise to the top and they'd rather just keep it, you know, yes. uh, down the bottom there and uh, not not let them progress and, and shine their light in the world. Exactly. Actually, there is a, being the executive boss, there's a lot this fixed mindset you're talking about. It's actually those bosses who are known as brutal and who actually have and acquire what is known as the CEO disease because they don't want to learn and improve and you know, coach even their team. What they say goes and that's it. And that is actually a detrimental mindset to have. So giving back, helping, improving, and being a student yourself is, is the this growth mindset, you know, that takes you forward. Absolutely. Well, being a great leader or even a good leader is one that allows others to um to shine. And you know, you should be putting people on your team that are smarter than you because they have other skills that you don't have and they can fill the gaps. But a lot of business owners don't do that and you know they 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 try and keep their team members small and don't um don't encourage growth exactly and this is where perhaps the title solopreneur to ceo is a bit misleading where because i don't believe it's actually a myth i don't think you can really run your own business completely on your own Unless you want, yeah, you, you need to scale somehow. You need to, unless you're just happy with, okay, that then, you know, okay. But it, so solo, solopreneur is really a putting together of a lot of people's talents. Mm. And, um, and that's what is required as well, you know. That's of right. course. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. You can't do everything. I mean, when you're starting out, yes, it's, you know, it's okay because you're quite small. And you can do that. But, you know, once your business grows, you need to yes. add on other team members to take away those tasks that uh, either you find daunting or just dislike doing altogether. I mean, I dislike book work. So that would that is the first thing that I'm delegating out when I get out. a new <laughs> team member because I so hate it. <laughs> okay. yeah, and yeah, hate yeah. is hate is my actual word for it. <laughs> yes, wow. Well, okay, strong. Well, that's correct. That's what what one must do. Realize, you know, where our limits are, and many people don't want to. You know, they don't want to see. You no, know, look, they say, no, no, I can do it all. I'd rather get a contractor because that way I don't have to have employees and. But they don't realize that if you and you start off on your own and then you create the culture, the right culture of a team that comes from the leader and there are elements to a culture, which I can tell you them now, like there is oh, psychological. Yes, do. Yes. Yeah, let me tell you. So let's say you want to start your team and it's the beginning. So it's Natasha. I also started on my own, but now I have a team of, that helps me. But I have to develop a culture like what do I want to bring forward that my team understands about the kind of values and behavior that I would like in my team and in order to do this means firstly I have to be very sure about myself mm. what is my being my presence that's why we call it executive presence I have to be present looking at who my team is and giving them support now to build the culture the three elements are, first of all, one very important one is psychology. It's called psychological safety, where you really have to give them the chance to disagree. And again, a brutal boss with a fixed mindset will never allow someone to disagree with them. Okay, so then they don't learn. The, the employee doesn't learn. It's stifled and probably wants to leave the job. So you've got to give them that chance to disagree. 
collaborate with conflict in a way, you know, so you get these good ideas and you say, okay, actually, I always suggest leave um, 15 minutes at the end of a meeting and ask everybody, okay, I want to hear your disagreements, really ask for it so that you get um, this uh, information because we're all different and uh, uh, different biases, different views. We cannot get everything. Then another element of culture is shared understanding. Okay, common understanding. So I, and here there are two parts, clarity of roles and goals and responsibilities that each individual has in your team. And usually in companies, each one knows, I have to do this, you have to do that. And uh, this is how our roles fit together. But then on the other side, there's the empathy. You know, do I understand you as a person? Who are you? What are your preferences, your strengths and weaknesses? And here I have some great little tips, like it's the energy check. Every week you ask your team, how are you doing? from one to five, how's your energy level? And if they say five, cool, then we're ready for a great working week. But should they say two or three means that something at home is gonna maybe limit their efficiency. So you as a, a CEO, as the, how can I help you? How can I support you? Mm. They may not even want it, but just the fact that you're doing it means, you, oh, oh wow, I matter to my boss. And that's what the person wants to feel. And the third, and these are quick little, another, uh, I don't know, I could carry on forever. We could be talking, talking, talking. Then you can ask me if you would like me to expand on, on certain things. And the third element is ah, the wonderful, that community purpose. Mm. It's important that the leader of a team or the CEO allows that person to understand not only why, not only the mission statement, but the for who, who are we doing this work for? Who am I helping at the end? And sometimes there you could even ask your clients to come and explain to your team, you know, your business helps me so much. And the team members realize their value and how much they matter. And this is so important for motivation, you know? So they're doing, as you said, something more than just your close circle. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's really Sister. important for inclusion. You need to include yes. everybody. Um, and I love what you said about, you know, having a, a, the, the 15 minutes after the, the meeting or just going down on the floor and asking how the staff are going. You know, well, how's your day going? How's your week going? What did you do on the yeah, weekend? Me. You know, then you don't want this big, long story, but as long as you know that they're doing well and if you offer help, I, I love that. I think that's how leaders it should be, you know, offer it the empathy because, you know, we all need it. We could just be we having a shitty it. day. Exactly, exactly. Except often the day-to-day -day work sometimes is just so stressful. You know, mm. some of my clients say, we don't have time, we don't have time. But that's the double-edged sword is that you don't have time, but then you're not taking care of the most important asset, which are your employees. You know, they are there when you're sick. That's why solopreneur is not easy because it all depends on you. You're sick. Who's going to do your job? But if you have a good team under you, they will do it and they will take care. So, yeah, you know, stress, but take care. Take care to give them that little bit of time. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And you've, and you've got to give them that um, opportunity to disagree with you because, you know, Communication is a two-way street and not everybody has the same ideas on, on how things should be done. And just because the boss says it's got to be done this way, well, you know, someone should be uh, allowed to open up and say, well, you know, I can say that we could perhaps do it this way and it, it could save us time, could save us money. And l leaders need to be open to that. Absolutely. That's very important. That um, And then another thing on that topic is also the idea that a great way for teams to also help themselves is that each week they can also say, well, what did I do yesterday or the week before? So where am I? What do I have to do tomorrow or today? But what is blocking me? Because people are scared to say that they can't do something or that they aren't, you understand? So giving yeah. them a chance 
together to say, look, I'm having a problem. And when if the boss is not there, once the team is established, though, you know, it, it helps because the team resolves their own problem. You're you're from tell me which is it Australia or New Zealand? Australian. Australia, yes. Yeah. But the New Zealand All Blacks. They are one of the, they have a culture that is incredible. There, there's that book, which is brilliant, you know, uh, about the, the rugby team. And they, mm. um, yeah, and they really, are, actually the team coaches themselves. The coach is not always there. They manage to coach themselves. They are so united and they've won in a hundred years, 75% of their competition. So mm. international one so they really have that culture of a team which is mm. uh, you know what we'd look for yeah that other other uh teams uh, strive for and most often they haven't reached that level of of i don't know um togetherness that the the all blacks have mm. yes absolutely so it's a this is what we're trying to do so it's not just me, I'm the boss, and everybody must listen to me. <laughs> it's come, guys. In a way, a, a, a CEO is a kind of a coach, you know, in a way. They, they do have to look after the people. And then the more the team becomes united and can help each other, the less the boss has to do that. Absolutely. So this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I guess... Um, you know, what are some tips that you could give um, a budding solopreneur or entrepreneur for that matter to get themselves ready and, and get their mindset ready to em employ team members? Yeah, it's not an easy thing because obviously it's an investment. But at the beginning, actually a leader would require three things in a way, okay? You need the competence also. You need the skill as a leader, you know, where you're going, having a great vision, because this is part of what you have to tell your team. That's our final goal. We're moving towards the, ah, the team loves to know about progress. So you have to, you know, show and share progress with your team members. So this, okay, didn't really answer your question, but as a solopreneur, the more you start seeing that you're starting to ask external people, you know, the more then you have to start saying, well, maybe I could hire someone who could be on my team slowly, because otherwise you're a transactional leader. You're just telling the contractor or the person, the, I don't know, whoever you employ on a, on a part time basis. It's not a full time. You're just telling them what to do and you get it back. But you don't get that commitment and that, mm. you know, of wanting to be part of something you know, that's growing. So they are a bit external, they do the job and finished. So this is when you start seeing you're growing and in order to grow more, you have to start to think I, I should need to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly you start building that team, putting in place this culture idea from the beginning, because usually they put it in when there are problems. Like Ford, I'll give you an example. Ford in 2006, was bankrupt almost. They were losing 17 billion. Yeah, yeah, they were going really crazy. And actually William Ford was the last of the family Ford to run in 2006, the company. And they then hired Alan Mulali, who was from uh, Boeing, the ex-CEO of Boeing. And he had to change the culture. And actually, when he had his first um, the senior leadership review with all the you know, big uh, executives from Canada, from here, from there, they came and he said, OK, and this was a great thing. He said, I want you to write on your presentations, if something is blocking you and blocking your production point, put a red mark next to it. If everything's going well, put green for the first Eight weeks, everyone just put green. No, and the company is losing billions. And so Ellen Mulali is like, oh, okay, why? Because they had fear. They were too scared. And then finally, this gentleman called Mark Fields of Canada, that's why I mentioned Canada, executive of the production, he said, look, I've got a problem. I'm doing it. I'm putting red. And the rest of the team said, oh, oh tomorrow Mark won't be here. They thought he would be fired. And so they were like... Instead, Alan Mulally called him over and said, come and sit next to me. Fantastic. Tell me what is the problem? How can we resolve it? And from there, he rebrought the company back into profit by doing this culture that needs to be 
installed from the beginning. It's, Absolutely, it's yes. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, building a, a culture around fear is not going to get you much, very much production at all. No, 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 not at all, not at all. And, yeah, and, and it's uncomfortable and people don't have a nice life, you know. It's like, no. oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's I know, I totally thing. agree. I used to work for a government agency and we had a manager there who uh, built um, around himself that he was to be feared. Um, and, you know, we all were terrified to make a mistake. And uh, when, he, when he left, um, we all breathed a sigh of relief. But I had the opportunity to meet him um, some years later. He wasn't at all like um, he portrayed in the office. He was totally different, very kind-hearted and very generous oh. and yeah but th he portrayed himself as being this really autocratic person and in the office and we're all terrified of him and you know this that's not a way to build a, a business it's certainly a, in my mind you know what how you are in right. in real life is how you should be in the office but you see we don't know if above him maybe above him he had someone who had that fear culture and so he had to this is the problem, the difficulty. You don't know. It's all mm. the culture comes from the top. So maybe he had to. No, that. no, I oh. I used to know all of the managers above him and they were nothing like oh, him. Oh, how weird then. <laughs> so he really decided that's it. I am going to be the brutal yes, boss. Yeah, yeah. He was terrible. Yeah, it was oh, um, no. terrifying <laughs> when he was there. Mm. Oh my goodness. You see, this is another aspect, this work-life balance. How can you have a, a work life life balance if at work you're terrorized every day because you did some little thing wrong, you know, and it'll affect you in your your home life. So it's yeah. very difficult, and yeah, we have to really make sure we balance. Yeah, well, oh, absolutely. I mean, we have to um, treat our employees or our team members as family, really, because that's what they are. I They're your work family, and you must treat them as such. Yes, absolutely. I thoroughly agree. <laughs> so this is what the solopreneur has to slowly build, you know, mm. and not yeah. believe. Yeah. Yeah. What, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just agreeing. Oh, no, with no. You. It's just, you know, some people think I can do it all on my own, but that leads to burnout. That leads to not being able to follow up. And, oh, it's just too stressful, you know. You you have to learn to trust Okay, for sure, and I've seen it, eh, that there will be employees that will go against and sabotage. Yes, of course, yeah, you know. Then those people have to be set aside, but uh, if they are really doing it on, it on purpose, you know. Mm. Oh, absolutely, no. I agree. I totally mm -hmm. agree with that. Um, Natasha, you know, what skills um, should, or what skills would you um, encourage a solo punyal to learn if they don't already have those skills? Oh, okay. One of the most important is this famous idea of being assertive <laughs> and not this uh, being too aggressive or passive aggressive where you, you know, you want to tell them, but then you don't. And so you keep it in and it's, uh, your frustration builds up or being too tough. So assertiveness is uh, uh, something you can learn. Actually, for me, all leaders are made, and um, actually Andrew Bennis, he made a, a big research on this and saw that leaders are made through self-improvement, transformation, mm -hmm. learning all the time. So these are the skills that solopreneurs can learn because you see um, up to a managerial level, technical competence is very important. But after that, to get to be the leader and the CEO, you need it's 85% like personal skill, empathy, and 85, not the other way around. So you really need to do a big step in that direction. So that's why a lot of personal development, learning about yourself, knowing your habits, who, how do you react? Because it's, it's unconscious. We do things without even realizing. We're so used to responding in a way that maybe the way I responded offended the person. Oh, oh, well, let me look at that, you know, and, and see. And it takes quite a while to change that behavior as well because it was a habit and now we have to. 
So it's a lot of self-reflection, awareness. And there are many, many um, places where you can learn this on online, coaches, uh, support, counseling, everything, everything. There's lots of yeah, opportunities. Yeah, I, I, I look, I have agreed with everything you've said because, you know, I've lived in that life. I And, and I've done some self-development to learn the skills that I need for when I build my team. So, um, you know, I think... Going and doing self-development, whether it's, as you say, through a coach or through some training of some type, just go and do it because you never know when the need will arise that you will need to use that skill somewhere. Yes, absolutely. And so perhaps you're not the CEO yet, but even people who are working for others or perhaps you, you run your your team, you know, but you can also implement the culture in your little team and then the the, uh, the bosses will see and they'll say oh but look you know I had a trainee uh, he was actually the training manager in a, a global uh, bank and he was brilliant they were giving him uh, pay rises and awards but they were never promoting him and one day he went to the manager and he said but why is nobody promoting me you're giving me all these uh, pay rises because you don't have in a way, he, they said executive presence, but he didn't have presence because he would go to the meeting, look at it and say, okay, we're talking about this, boom, boom, boom. Okay, bye-bye, see you tomorrow. Close the computer and leave. And he just didn't have that connection, that bonding with his team. So this is what you got to, you know, learn uh, slowly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, if you don't have those skills, go and learn them. That's what I say. Yes. Yes, that's it, Rose. Thank you for putting it so pointedly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, where can people find you if they want to work with you? Gosh, um, thank you. Uh, I, I'm LinkedIn is the easiest. Natasha Sakota. There we go on LinkedIn. So uh, that's and there's and my you've website. Got, um, you've got a, a uh, some coaching uh, on your website. Um, yes, I have some blogs and I also have put my, um, let's say, system that I use, but uh, blogs, not really coaching in a sense, uh, just a, a few tips and posts and things like that. But people can set up a, a meeting, just a half an hour, get to know each other and if they have a certain issue and then we can talk about it and then see if they want to continue with you know, further sessions. Absolutely. Perfect. If you were to give some words of wisdom to anybody um, on any topic, what would that be? <laughs> I, I suppose for me, it was, I never thought, you know, I did a master's when I was 21. I was so quick. I know, I did, I know, I know. It's, I, I did four years in, in South Africa, did my degree. And at 22, I was doing the master's in Milan and I rushed it. But I thought, I'll get all the studying over with, over with, finito. And then I work and work and work. And now I here I see myself in the last seven, eight years studying again. And, oh, that's that's what I missed in the some years. I just didn't study anymore. And, no, study, find out, improve. That That's it. It's just that that's the biggest thing. Life is a journey. And uh, that's what I would say. Study as much as you can. Never stop. <laughs> Never stop. No, no, no. I um, love learning new things. I usually teach myself how to use something or how to figure something out or whatever, um, just because that's the way I'm wired. I like to learn on my own. It's like pulling, like a boy pulling his car goodness. apart, you know, and finding out how the wheels spin around. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Uh, that requires a lot of uh, self-thought and analysis. It's, it's great. And it improves your neuroplasticity. Now we go to the more technical. Yes, it you know, does. Yes, it new, does. <laughs> Natasha, it's Brilliant. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, the conversation has been absolutely wonderful. Also for me, Rose, thank you so much for having me and all the best to you and to everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, Rose. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.